Hello ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between. This is Amanda and we are continuing Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song. Uh, I heard you all about the audio last time. I have fixed it today. Sorry about that. Uh, I did see there is level selection which makes me very happy so even though there's no multiple slots um, we can still do that. So, Hey everyone so um the game file corrupted. I was able to go back and uh, do a few things because I had to restart the entire chapter, starting with MM. Um, and I found something right here with Hilda, so I'm going to go ahead and talk to her as MM. I'm aware I wouldn't normally do that because I would just normally do exactly what I had done in my previous playthrough, which I did. Ugh, I'm tired um, of waiting. But I'm going to go ahead and just see if anything interesting comes out of that and record back here. Oh, great. My shadow. A book about alchemy? That's a weird thing to keep. Notes from the Convention of Thorns. Ah, see, my nosy self forgot all of this. The first kindred in Boston was Madeline Coventry, a Tremere elder from the Winchester Chantry in 1635. Shortly after that, the Blue Blood settled in the city and ruled the entire Massachusetts colony after driving out the Thaumaturges. The Bruja, Gangrel, and Malkov families took control of the city during the American Revolution in 1783. There was much confusion regarding the distribution of power and the Tremere returned to the city and created the Boston Chantry. This is also a time when the Sabbat, active in Maine, began to attack Camarilla settlements throughout the Boston area. The Tremere Chantries of Boston and Salem competed for dominance for almost half a century before the Salem colony was overtaken by the Sabbat in 1831. The children of Malkov took advantage of the turmoil and seized power in 1825. Quentin King III became the prince of the city until his death in 2014, having supposedly given in to the beckoning. Quentin King had to contend with the machinations of the Sabbat, the powerful Giovanni in Boston, and the British settlers who vied for his position. More than a century of secret alliances who were forged to pit one group against the other and eventually defeat them by tearing each other apart. The prince kept the Sabbat horde at bay, in part by accepting the British support of William Biltmore. A number of American vampires who were unhappy with the British presence created the Kindred of Liberty to oppose colonization, and in Hartford and New Haven, resistance was organized under the name of the Gemini League. The beckoning freed the city from the British influence as well as from the control of the children of Malkov. But perhaps the fact that London had not been responding for several years was the reason for the British withdrawal. In any case, Miss Hazel Iverson, a member of the KOL, naturally rose to the head of the domain, restoring Br Boston to its former glory, long tarnished by her predecessor's collaboration with London. Boston was once again American, strong and free. Annals on the First Inquisition. How morbid. Treatise on Thaumaturgy, also known as Blood Sorcery, this discipline combines Vitae and Mortal Sorcery. Sorry, my cat's playing with something. <laughs> there are no known limits to the type of rituals created by the Tremere, or their fields of application. We will focus here on the different branches of this science, which is not exhaustive because <sighs> few can testify to the secrets of blood witches. The Path of Blood, where the powers of Vitae can be manipulated. The Ritual, where thaumaturgical formulas with innumerable effects are invented and jealousy guarded. Jealously guarded, excuse me. And now? On the London court, based on the most recent information available, we can draw the following conclusions. Although no official census was ever attempted, at the turn of the millennium, it was commonly believed that there were many more than 200 vampires living in the Greater London area. I'm tired of waiting. Greater London area, excuse me. The city's massive size made it relatively easy for newcomers to come and seek their fortune while hiding from the court. As a deterrent, kindred who were not registered within the London court were considered to be fair game for the Scourge and other bounty hunters who could practice diablerie. 
This practice often deterred newcomers, and it had come to involve even the upper echelons of the London Camarilla. Indeed, Queen Anne herself was a practitioner of diablerie, and for a long time she took every opportunity to I'm claim the blood of undesirables. In 2008, mortals reported an uptick in forensic anomalies, including bodies that temporarily appeared dead. At the same time, the same report was made by a team in charge of a human trafficking case. Thus, these new anatomical suspects are referred to as the infected. It is believed today that this information, which is the most recent in our possession, has been cross-checked by several structures in the country, but not been taken seriously I'm by Queen Anne. London fell the following year, as did Vienna. Nothing more was heard of them overnight. There are no kindred left to tell us what happened. Communications have been cut off since then, as they are too risky. The story of the fall of London gives us hope that mortals believe that they have finished us off. Until then, the Camarilla must build an even stronger and more robust masquerade. Alright, let's see what Hilda has to say. Hmm. So, what exactly did Hazel want with you? Well, it doesn't sound like she has the best... Uh... Ooh, actually, I kind of want to try this. Can I? No, I can't focus. Okay. It doesn't sound like she has the best relationship with Hilda, so I'm gonna say she doesn't need to know. I'm sorry, but this is between Hazel and me. I can't believe it. Don't you see what she's doing? Yeah, she's asking for a little discretion, so what? We haven't heard from anyone at the party all night. Many of our own didn't make it home. And she's still reigning through division. She's doling out information strategically. It's the worst possible thing to do in a crisis. And we needn't even mention how she treats the primogen. She straight out refuses to see us. I don't know if to say she's jealous. It is kind of worrying. I will give her that. She's isolating herself. It's a bad sign. Hazel's gone completely paranoid. She asked me a ton of questions. You understand why I'm worried? I don't need this right now. Oh, I've gotta go. I've got stuff to do. Be careful. Oh, okay. For four years, I have been working to heal the city's wounds. You've already helped me avoid traps in the past. Okay. For this case, I'm going to say I don't remember. Uh, because I'm curious about this. I wonder if she's maybe manipulating Leisha's lack of memory, or if there, it's something else that going on. That was a long time ago, you know? I can barely... You helped me to foil conspiracies, make the right decisions for the domain. You're not like the other children of Malkav. Quentin King knew that. The Mad King. I remember, yeah. I had you released from the Institute because your premonitions are the most detailed, the most accurate. I wanted them to help me understand the Chantry's hand more clearly before we signed our agreement with them. But this alert changes everything. I need to understand what's just happened. Did you sense anything, possibly about what happened tonight? Well, we were very forthcoming to the other two about how vivid it was. I'm curious about saying yes, but it's got nothing to do with it. Because why would we talk about a vision, but then say it has nothing to do with what she's asking for? You know what, I'm, since I already gave um, Journey to the prince, I'm gonna have Leisha lie. It's all very hazy in my mind. Come on, we're friends. You must tell me everything. Okay, I guess I can't defend myself. Yes, yes, I know, but uh, I saw images, but they had nothing to do with this party. It didn't make any sense. It was a long white hallway. It's a little early for sure, 
but it's a good start. I'm sorry, I can't be of more help. Don't be sorry. There's something else you can do for me. Your discretion can still be of use to me. I need to be sure that none of the members of my council are going to take advantage of the situation. That doesn't trust them. <laughs> you don't trust them? You can never be too careful. You and Delson are the only two people I trust entirely. The members of the council have their council lodgings here. It gives them the impression that they have power. And it means I can keep an eye on them. I'm going to give you the key. Go and see if you find anything that could make me doubt their loyalty. Anything that might make me think there's something in the works. Uh, all right. Miss Drury burned the midnight oil to make sure this event was secret. I imagine there might be some evidence in the information she gathered. I need it. All right, consider it done. You've never disappointed me, Laisha. Please don't start today. Until then, I hope to have found more information. But above all, don't share what we've discussed with anyone. I don't need more gossip. Can I take Halsey with me? Of course. All right then, I'll be right back. Shoot, I wonder if that was a mistake. Because she could have seen and backed up Journey. But I want to see what happens. to see if he has my teddy. Okay. Come and find me when you're done. Let's see if Hazel was right. Did Jara leave anything behind? I'm sorry, but that child does not sound like a child. <laughs> Password equals arrival. Where are you? The time is okay. Um, so, okay, we could still, um, find that file that Journey was looking for. Oh, a log with a list of everything that was checked for the party. Invoices, reservations, rentals. All from our network. It's Journeys. That could be of interest to Hazel. Okay, good. So we got what she was looking for. Well, this thing's old. Does she still use it? Oh, wait, she has technology 3 3. Okay. Mm. Caius Leto. As you wish. R. E. Quincy Market. Caius, I never reconsider anything without new evidence. If you have any, please send it to me. And not on a computer. You know how I feel about them. Ms. Drury, I've already told you about my need to investigate the Quincy Market case. I know that you disagree with my theory, but an aborted attack on the prince is not to be taken lightly. Could you please reconsider your position? Uh, 
Ah, okay, so the one on the bottom was sent first. That was August 20th, and we are in September 19th. So this was about a month ago. Okay, I'll read from the bottom this time. Uh, subject unauthorized transmission. Ms. Drury, I picked up a signal that appears to be an unauthorized outbound call. Could you come see me as soon as possible so that I can give you the details? Did you try to access my computer? No, I can't imagine anyone being able to hack into your computer since you change your password every three days. Besides, I thought you preferred handwritten notes. That's not something I'm willing to joke about. That's enough. I know you ordered my computer to be searched. You don't have to monitor me, monitor me like this. What good am I to you if you don't trust me? Jara, if someone is trying to search your computer, believe me, that order didn't come from me. I have every confidence in you, and I urge you to have the same confidence in me. Finally, in the future, I would appreciate it if you did not make such sweeping accusations without proof. If you have any concerns, please come and speak to me. Sincerely yours, your prince, Hazel, Hazel Iverson. I rely on myself to protect what needs to be protected, and I have my own ways of keeping myself safe from undue curiosity. Sophia, it's precisely 10 o'clock p.m. I'm heading to the party and I'm leaving Caius Leto in charge. You know the procedure, let everyone know, have a good night. Recent secure transmissions. Earliest one is August 4th. I, I'm not gonna remember all these codes, uh, but I can look at the dates at least. Um, most seem to happen around 10 or 11 p.m., except for September 2nd and August 25th. That was earlier. Oh, 5.52 a.m. That possibly was a human. Depending on when the sun comes up in Boston. Okay, that's cool. Subject, Mr. Jason Moore. July week one, re report submitted by Mr. Wu, NSTR, night, vis night visit from Ms. Havel. Why can't I speak? Ms. H Mr. Mr. Hazel Iverson, accompanied by Delson Coates. Wait, isn't Wu Galeb's child, or ghoul, excuse me? And why are they calling Hazel Mr. Whatever. July week two, report submitted by Mr. James, NSTR. Wife and child went to Costa Rica for two weeks. Night visit from Mr. Beryl Underwood on Thursday. July week three, report submitted by Mr. Wu, NSTR. Night visit from Mr. Beryl Underwood two times, Tuesday and Thursday. July week four, report submitted by Mr. James, NSTR, family came home. August week one, report submitted by Mr. Wu, NTSR. Oh, that's different. August week one. Mr. Moore wants a little more privacy. August week two. Report submitted by Mr. James. And STR. Wife and child went to Costa Rica for one week. Night visit from Mr. Barrow Underwood on Friday. August week three. Report submitted by Mr. Wu. Mrs. Moore left again the day after she got back from Costa Rica. The child is upset. Mr. Moore has trouble concentrating. August week four, report submitted by Mr. James, NSTR. The subject must be experiencing a conjugal dispute. Oh, that's nice to know. I did not need to know that. Okay. Information notes, unification party. Summary of individual files on the Hartford Chantry. Mr. Osborne, regent of the Hartford Chantry, ambitious and paranoid, Extremely skilled in thaumaturgy, favors unification, but mentions escape routes in his private communications to be monitored. Visits the Jefferson Library once a month. Ms. Wakefield, John Rice's child. She is secretive, mind-controlled specialist who supports Mr. Osborne unconditionally, although he continues to be wary of her. She supports the unification to support the, her, the choice of her regent. Mr. Samuels, child of Uptown Rollins, the blue blood is pragmatic, well-versed in insurance finance. He's the head of a thriving business and seems to have moved to Boston on a part-time basis, residing at the Jefferson Library. 
Our intelligence indicates that he is there to ensure the financial balance of the agreements to be signed, which he is rather in favor of. Mr. Fleming, he specializes in poison and is Osborne's personal bodyguard. He has been on several blood hunts and has recently moved to the library. We believe that he is there to protect the warlocks in the event of a retreat. According to our sources, he is opposed to the agreement because he harbors a strong personal resentment towards Dejan Siaka. Ms. Vance has lived in Boston since the creation of the Hartford branch in Boston. Unknown Sire specializes in high-level protection rituals. Little information available. The party will be her first outing from the library if she expects if she accepts the invitation. We need more time to research her background. Mr. Woods, child of Deneb Osborne, resides in Hartford. is new to, new to thaumaturgy, but shows very good skills in memory magic. Still under the authority of his sire, and therefore in favor of the agreement made with us. Mr. Green resides in Hartford. Child of Mrs. Wakefield, nothing to report, was embraced two years ago. Kept his family, his job as a research chemist. Chemist, why can I not speak? Uh, that's probably the one. Report indicates that he is pro-unification. <clears throat> Mr. Chen was selected by the Chantry to come and work at the Red Salon and conduct experiments on blood stabilization. Extensive experience in thaumaturgy. The report indicates that he is in favor of unification, but for his own interest, he only feeds in blood banks. Ms. Halstead was selected by the Chantry to come and work at the Red Salon and conduct experiments on blood stabilization, specialized in blood strange storage rituals. The report indicates that she is rather reticent about the unification, afraid to share her knowledge su suspicious of Boston. List of vessels. Marvin Haney, Patricia Lane, Patricia Lane, Corey Perkins, Brian Bafford, Mary Sandoval, Robert Sigler, Richard Walton, Michelle Jacobs, Vernon Kennedy. Uh, okay, Intelligence on the Hartford Chantry. In the 17th and 18th centuries, the thaumaturges were influential throughout New England, but they also experienced dark times, seeing their power erode over the years, primarily due to the enroachment of the Sabbat members from northern and western New England during this period. Some elder Tremere believe that at least one of the major covenant covens aligned, allied with the Sabbat to bring about their downfall, although few agree on which of these three major covens is most to blame. The loss of status suffered by the entire family is a wound that still runs deep today, and has led to their great dislike of the Sisters of Salem. Operating primarily out of a chapel in Hartford, the Thaumaturges have had an ongoing competition with the Ventru Coteries for dominance in the state, and have been quick to exploit any opportunity. Thus, when the Prince of New Haven and Hartford came to them for help in the early 1900s, they graciously accepted. Wisely, they have not yet recalled the debt the Ventru owe them, but that is likely to happen soon. Indeed, as a result of the unification agreement with Boston, the Chantry will greatly increase its political and economic clout over the Hartford domain. Within the Chantry itself, prestige is highly prized, and competition with the, within the upper echelons of the hierarchy is so fierce that more thaumaturges are lost to internal strife than to past clashes with the Sabbat. This is largely due to the fact that Deneb Osborne, despite his understanding behavior, jealously guards his position and makes it impossible for his apprentices to progress. Whenever a warlock seems to be on the verge of unlocking a new mystery, they are often replaced by a less talented one. Today their Boston branch is mysterious and impenetrable despite our best efforts. We think it would be wise to require a visit to the Chantry as a sign of trust. Our intelligence reports numerous disappearances of mortals in the vicinity of the building, which fortunately have gone unnoticed. This is what Hazel asked me to bring her. Go to Housley, Halsey, or investigate the other members of Primogen. I think I might as well just be nosy and investigate them. Jara, I'd have liked to give you this bond that you've been waiting for, for so long. But I can't bring myself to condemn you to my situation. But don't be afraid. I will never abandon you, Jara. Never. We're bound together forever. We are one. Since that first night, that first instance, nothing can ever keep us apart, I promise. Okay. Hmm. 
1841. Going back to the computer right now. Was there anything in that drawer? No. <laughs> oh wait, I already unlocked it. I guess that's if I didn't have enough technology. Okay, so that's what it meant when the password said arrival. It was their arrival on the boat. Nobody here. I'm going to be able to take a look around Dijon's. Salem Gazette. Salem Gazette. City Council has found a new home for the Sisters of Salem at the Salem Library. In recognition of the organization's work in sharing and supporting our local history, while many know of the group, thanks to the annual organization of their Hallamus and the Mighty Dead and Martyrs celebration, what's less well known is their implication with people in need throughout the rest of the year. They host newcomers to the area, troubled youth and older citizens who are isolated. The Sisters of Salem have an extensive network of volunteers. They are joined by about a dozen new members each year. Our community should be proud of the unity and mutual support shown by all of our fellow citizens from their participation in the celebrations to their participation in the social and cultural volunteering done by this organization, declared the mayor after the city council meeting. And she was also very proud to announce that her spouse had joined the Sisters of Salem the previous month. Interesting. Guardian Ravens. Blood Magnet. Concealment Ritual. Illuminated Betrayal. Primus and the God. Well, that was our out. So I was thinking about Journey and the Illuminated Trail she had, but. We used Auspex for that, not this. Tarot cards. How fun. The Emperor, the Chariot, Temperance. Easy. Dijon is thinking about taking a trip. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, Selena's at my feet and that disturbed her. <laughs> Polaroid photo. Consumables, single use items, select for five bonuses. Most of the time, consumables are used to replenish willpower or eliminate hunger. Each type of gear has advantages or disadvantages when, equip when equipped. The effects of the gear apply as long as it is equipped. Gear may not be equipped or unequipped during dialogue. Once they have been collected, consumable items. Phones, documents, etc., could also be consulted from inside your inventory. Restores two willpower. Okay, cool. I don't need to do that yet. Just like New Orleans, this is definitely Dijon's place. He must have done a warlock ritual. One of those guardian raven. Hold on, which was the one that called for the raven? The guardian ravens? Concealment, fresh bird's blood. Skull, white candle wax. Or restoration, I don't know, blood sacrifice chamber. So it was either concealment, restoration, or the raven uh, guardians. This knife has blood on it. Nice croc. Well, well. What have we here? My dear sisters, I hope this letter will reach you quickly. Things are critical here. It appears that we've been the target of a major incident. A code red has been issued and we have not heard from those who had already gone to the party our prince had organized for the unification. 
This could be in our favor because it's possible that the Hartford Chantry is behind it. Although I have faithfully served my prince's interests while negotiating this, tre this treaty, these new suspicions could serve our interests in relation to a potential alliance between Boston and Salem. He didn't Rest assured that... that... But that'll be enough for Hazel to make up her mind about him. Wait, hold on. Skull, bird, candle, wax. Those were three ingredients. It looks like one of Richard's Rorschach tests in green. <sighs> Even with the color, I still see the same thing as always. Blood. I do like playing as her. I've never really played Malkavian before, but she's interesting. And I do like this snooping and detective work that we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna just walk around to the other doors on this floor just because, again, I, I refuse to believe that um, we can't investigate Hilda or the other. The prince wants this uh, floor under religion. surveillance. I'm carrying out orders. Why am I saying primogen? I just said I don't want to pronounce it the way LaCroix pronounces it. Primogen. Hazel told me to keep a low profile here. This area is reserved for the prince and her primogen. Shit. Hilda's in her office. She's going to see me. Unseen passage allows you to move around without being seen. In this state, it's not possible to physically interact with the environment. You may, however, stealthily read a document or examine an object. This power will be activated automatically if you enter a location that is prohibited. Okay, great. We shouldn't get too close. She might be able to sense me. Why did you come back? Why? Other than to show that you're doing just fine on your own. Madam. Hilda's more concerned with the men than she is with Hazel. I hope she'll be happy to hear that. Oh, she's got a portrait of Emma. I'm not gonna just walk in front of her. I don't think there's anything else because it uh, checked the box. Okay, who is this person? Richard. I don't believe we've met him. Richard's apartment. Oh, this is her psychiatrist, duh. He didn't change a thing, as usual. But he's also a member of the Primogen. Richard always liked masks. Like all children of Malkov. Dear Dr. Dunham, as instructed, I've prepared the donors you listed for the unification party. They will be ready for you to pick up at 9 o'clock p.m. at the Red Salon. I think that your guests will be impressed by the quality of the vintages you're offering them, and I hope that they will fully appreciate the fruit of your labors, else. Betty. So he's Monkavian too. I see guilt. Richard often asked me. How many hours have I spent sitting in this armchair for my therapy sessions? Archive Confidential Report, 7, 1978. Unknown origin, 13 members of the court caught in a sudden collective panic for several minutes. Quentin King, our prince, called for investigation. Closed without any conclusive find findings in 1988, after the prescribed 10 years of investigation. 
October 31, unknown origin, the servants of the primogen. No, Apartments begin to hum the same song for one hour. Quentin King, our prince, called for an investigation, closed without any conclusive findings in 1988, after the prescribed 10 years of investigation. October 31, unknown origin, the servants of the prince's quarters all laughed hysterically for one hour. Quentin King, our prince, called for investigation. Be hiding without somewhere any conclusive else. findings in 2009 after the prescribed 10 years of investigation. Ms. Hazel Iverson, our prince, reported feeling a sudden and brief mental intrusion during her speech. Ms. Hazel Iverson, our prince, called for investigation. Close after investigation, report delivered in person. So this one was uh, discovered? Mr. Teddy. Or, you know, the investigation was completed. Unknown origin, feeling of imminent death felt by several members of the court, lasting several minutes. Ms. Hazel Iverson, our prince, called for investigation, closed after investigation report delivered in person. Who was delivering her these reports? Is it Richard? Stop, please stop talking, Elsie. <laughs> Unknown oh, origin, oh, servants in the primogen's apartments began vomiting for several minutes. The vessels present experienced uncontrollable crying fits throughout the night. Ms. Hazel Iverson, our prince, called for an investigation, closed it after investigation, report delivered in person. Okay, a lot of these happen on Halloween. Do any of these happen on the 8th of August or the 7th of May? He must be hiding somewhere else. No, but they seem to be repeating themselves every couple decades. Insert floppy disk. Oh, do what? Can I find a one? Mr. Teddy. Oh God, those uh, children today will never know the joys of a floppy disk. It's like the house is in Vampire with the bathtub right in the middle of the uh, bedroom. At least put a folding screen or something. He must be hiding somewhere else. I'll give some idea of division. Oh God, will this child move? <laughs> Floppy disk. Maybe I'll find a way to read it. Dear Ms. Iverson, as per your request, Mr. Underwood came to the Red Salon to carry out a review in view of the collaboration with the Hartford Tremere. We can confirm that production can triple if we expand our operations into our basement. I think it would be wise to create a, reverse, a reserve and allocate only one third of our production to Hartford. We would also provide a temperature controlled storage area for this purpose. As for your more practical questions, Please do not include the formulas I have been able to work out in your dealings. Mr. Underwood also feels that we need to keep them secret in order to keep the advantage of this agreement. We both feel that convincing them to send Tremere to Boston to perform the blood stabilization tests would be a better alternative. He has odd uh, sentence structure. As for an industrialized produ production of more than 400 units per week, I prefer to err on the side of caution. I'm able to produce everything alone in my no, laboratory. Aiming for more at the start would require a move and would surely get us noticed by our suppliers of raw materials. I hope to have provided you with the missing information for your discussions on this agreement, which, in addition to the giant step forward that it will make possible for science, will undoubtedly be at the dawn of a new Boston under your reign. Sincerely yours, Dr. Dunham. Mr. Teddy. Richard must have had a breakthrough if Hazel's interested in it. Okay, so I believe that's all the members of the primogen. If the uh, building structure is the same. I'm just going to try that door just to be safe. Oh, yeah, there's a plaque in front of it. There's someone in there. Okay. Who is this? Beryl Underwood. Galip's child. Hmm. Restricted access means nothing to you, I see. Make yourself at home. Don't mind me. 
I already don't like you. Just to be, make a point, I think I'm gonna snoop. Okay, that's an invitation to the party. As agreed, here's our payment. Thank you for your confidentiality. You are indirectly contributing to one of the greatest forensic discoveries of our time. If by any chance you still have bloodless bodies in good condition to offer us, please let us know. Dr. Karen Parsons. Sorry, I'm thinking of anyone who has a K now. Just who is that person that wrote to Jara? Are you at least aware that you're in my office? I sure am, my dude, but clearly I don't care. Okay, if I can walk around without consequence, you know. Ugh, these suits. Barrel's as dead outside as he is inside. The speculative news from... Oh, he's okay. about as fun as his reading material. How am I not surprised? What doesn't surprise you? For you to turn up at a time like this. The prince had me released. Of course, she needs you. <laughs> I'm I guessing no she sent you to spy on the council. Mm. What do you mean? Tell me. Do you remember the last time she pulled you out of your musty hole? It's just that I... You don't remember, do you? You're still having those little memory issues, it seems. And I suppose Halsey's here, too. Of course she is. <laughs> the more the merrier. And don't start with me, Beryl. Otherwise... Why don't you go out and play in the sun? And let me get back to work. Work? With everything that's going on, Hazel will appreciate your dedication. Get out, please. <sighs> that's all I'm going to be able to find out about him. Hazel's going to be disappointed. Okay. Halsey's waiting for me. Well, three out I of four ain't Hazel bad. Be proud of us. I kind of wish that they had given us the character sheets, like, after we had an idea of what we were going to do. Okay, so. As you probably saw from my little bonus with MM, uh, my game footage recording got corrupted up to this point. Um, so, I did notice something in Leisha and Halsey's character sheet. Um, if you go here... I'll look at Tom Slee <laughs> later. Um, I know what those are, basically. Um, but if you go here, you'll see that Halsey is listed as Gen 11. So she is indeed a vampire. But Laisha is listed as a Gen 12. And neither of their sires are listed, so maybe I got this wrong. Maybe Halsey was embraced first and then embraced her mother. But regardless, let's go talk to the prince. Where did you go, child? There you are. So, did you find your teddy? No, not yet. I'm not sure he's here. What about you? Did you finish your job for the prince? Yes, I found something that might be of interest to Hazel. Does that mean we're going back to see the prince then? Yeah, we can go. Let's go, Sugar Fangs. Leisha. I'm all ears. Everything went all right. I knew I could count on you. Was Halsey a good girl? Yes, as usual. Good. Were you able to find anything interesting in Ms. Drury's apartments? Yes. There was intel she had gathered on the guests, including those from the Hartford Chantry. Hmm. Anything about their regent? D 
often have Osborne. Yes, he seems to be obsessed with memory magic. Interesting. I gave everything to Delson. Thank you. I'll take a look at it later. Were you able to see or hear anything interesting? Well, might as well go through everything. Let's um, first talk about the file on our security, because that should clear out Journey. I also found that at Jara's, a file on the party. It's a record of everything Journey did. That could be useful. Give it to Delson on your way out. Anything else? Merciful, okay. Well, this should clear Hilda. I don't know how we should feel about her, but I mean, I guess she's harmless. Hilda was in her room. She was acting strangely. What do you mean? She was whispering things, talking to a picture of a mem. Touching, but that's of no importance. Okay. At Dijon's, I found a letter addressed to the Salem Chantry. Did he betray me for the warlocks? I don't know. It just said that he's participating in your project, but that he would have preferred an agreement with Salem. Oh, I understand his recent illusions a little better now. I'm going to need to have a word with him. Go on. I had a vision. I knew you would. What did you see? Was I in your vision? I think it was me. My forehead was on fire. The... I... All right. Do you have any idea what it could mean? Not in the slightest. Are you disappointed? The important thing is that you're starting to have visions again. Let's not talk about an end and journey. That's all I was able to find. I knew I could count on you. Thank you, Leisha. Richard still wasn't there. Were you able to find out anything else? Yes. One of my servants just came back from his bar, the Red Salon. As that's where he does his research, I had hoped to find him there. But she confirmed that Dr. Dunham had gone to the party early with a few of his vessels. I'm sorry, Leisha. No. If he had been destroyed, I would have felt it. I have to go find him. You're the most discreet of all of us, it's true. But we have no idea what might have happened there. It could be dangerous. I won't be alone. Halsey will be with me. Of course. And one last thing. Dr. Dunham wasn't the only one there. There was also Miley, my child. Bring her back to me. Yes, of course. We'll leave right away. I wouldn't expect anything less of you. Thank you, Leisha. Interesting. Overview. Each scene ends with an overview of your accomplishments, failures, and what you could have done differently. For each success, your character earns experience points. Could have spied on the conversation between MM and Journey. Sure. Sure. Could have discovered Beryl under its preoccupation. We earned introspective and merciful. Let the premonition overtake you. Okay, so that was um, either way, it wouldn't have been a success or failure. Let the prince documents so that would clear Journey's name. Okay, good. Listen in to hear what was on Hilda McAndrew's mind. You found a letter from Dijon. Okay, good. I'm, I'm happy with this, yes. M.M., come here. Thanks, M.M. You've brought me Journey. I knew I could count on you. Jay is waiting in the antechamber. She's nervous. Tell Delson to go easy on her. We'll see about that. Did you need me for anything else? Not right now. But I will soon. I have one more favor to ask of you. All right. I'll be waiting in the next room.
Okay. Same with MM. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Okay, good. And I'm feeling good about our decision to bring Journey to the Prince after what we've done with Glacia. So it's interesting how these guys overlap. Um, we'll see how I feel later on. <laughs> Galeb. Okay, so we'll go ahead and give him some traits and then see the next cutscene. And then I think we'll end this video. Okay. I am going to say Investigator for him because that's what I've been saying all along. Intimidation. Oh, and he has no available experience points. That's okay. What kind of things does he have in the disciplines? Sense the unseen. Oh, that's something that we haven't had. Okay. Okay, I like this so far, but let's see what um, this will do for him. Delson. Zori. It seems that the Camarilla is in danger. I am at your disposal. Your sense of duty is a credit to you, Galeb. You haven't lost your touch, I hope. The Code Red is linked to the Unification Party with the Chantry. No one there is answering anymore. Who was there from our side? How many of us were there? Probably a good 20, give or take. Dr. Dunham and our top spy, Jara Drury, were already there. Mm, we might have lost two members of the Primogen. Any word from Hartford? What about Hartford? Have you heard from them? If those dogs had anything to do with what happened, I'll cut their throats myself. Do you think they might be involved? I don't know. It's too early to draw any conclusions. Where do you want to start? Can I... can I count on you? You have no reason to doubt me. One by one, the Anseli heed the beckoning and go east. You're the eldest in the city now. Don't do this to me. Not now. I would be very grateful to you. And Fang. May I be of service? Go and see Caius. With Jara gone, he's in charge of security. He may have learned something. You can count on me. You have my absolute confidence, Galeb. Well, those two are sizing each other up. <laughs> okay, so I was wrong. Um, Fang is Galeb's ghoul. Okay, so I'm actually excited to play Galeb. I was really pleased with that outcome with Laisha. Um, but let me know, which one do you guys prefer so far? I know we've only played the two ladies. Um, are you excited to see the gentleman here? Um, are you, do you like this game so far? Do you like the way I've been playing? Uh, leave us a comment down below. Hit that like button if you like this video. Smash that subscribe button if you want to see more uh, videos like this. And don't forget to uh, ring that bell if you want to be notified every time I make a post. But uh, for now, I'm Amanda, and we will see you guys next time. Bye!